What's up everyone, my name is Parv and welcome to week 50 for League of Legends Top 5 Plays. I can't believe we've already gone through 50 incredible episodes and there's no one to thank but you guys for your overwhelming support since day one. You're the best. Starting off the episode, we have Muscular Dean playing on Poppy. Isn't that the guy that did a thousand pull-ups without stopping? Bet you didn't expect to see a celebrity appearance on today's episode. And now we move on as she flash charges him, barely missing the wall, and then pops her ultimate which renders the tower useless as she dives him. Jarvan tries to run circles, but her ultimate lasts just long enough to bring him down while holding onto a fluffy amount of HP left. At this point, she wants to run towards the jungle, but spots a Mumu headed her way, so she turns around and makes a break for her turret as the enemy turret gets back on her, and Mumu comes out, but she dodges the bandage toss, and then Heroic charges to a creep to dodge his ultimate as the ash arrow comes flying by. Whoa. To put the cherry on top, of Mumu chases and then dives, but she manages to kill him too after a long chase for the 2-0 exchange. Coming in at 4th place is the Gigolo playing on Rise, and he's on his way to defend bottom turret against 3 when suddenly Warwick pops infinite dress and they all deal heavy damage to him as he dips to under 100 health flashing out of there and then turning around to utilize the spell vamp from his ultimate to heal up. Gangplank tries to run but the tower picks him up as Rise falls to one shot range but runs for a moment and then turns around killing Nidalee which heals him for just enough with Will of the Ancients to finish off Warwick in an insane flip flop 3 for 0 exchange. Scoring in at our third place spot is Toxapontium Brand, but this is really just a great team play altogether. So as we can see, four enemy players are waiting in the brush for them to fall for the bait and initiate onto Malzahar. The scores are very close and the enemy team is really trying hard to fight with Baron so that they can ace and push hard. All of a sudden we see Pantheon's ult start up and then Galio teleports in using his ultimate. Here comes the Panth ult, then Brand and Graves come in demolishing the enemy team despite having Baron. They stick around for Akali to come out of her shroud and then kill her as well, taking the massive lead all thanks to some impressive timing and team coordination. Coming in at second place is Arrest69 playing some TF, and his team was fighting a Baron and he showed up late but grabs the kill in the fleeing Malphite. He continues towards the fight but then quickly realizes that his team has been wiped out. He sees an interesting opportunity to rise so he sticks around tossing out his red card and then a beautiful wild card picking up the triple kill and instantly leveling out the team fight score to four on each side. He then turns it around on the chasing Renekton to pick up the unofficial pentakill and ace for his team. And yes it is possible to get a pentakill without acing, it's all about the revive. And for our number one pro play for this week, we have Animan on Katarina. Right from the start, we see a team fight erupt the dragon and her team is getting slaughtered. So she makes her way towards the fight, getting exhausted right away. She shown posts some Organa and starts her ultimate, dealing heavy damage and killing Akali. As Jarvan ults in, she gets very low, but then she kills him and shown posts the Grace, followed by Q to kill Morgana. She had an ease again and bouncing blades to pick up the quad and a final shown post for the pen to kill an ace. And for the bonus clip of the week, we have Tigris 205 on Renekton. He's just getting fury from using his Q in the brush. Hmm, that's odd. As the clip plays in the background, I just wanted to say two things. First off, if you haven't heard already, Pertainer Monster has a current job opening as a graphic designer. If you're interested, we want you to send us your best Pertainer Monster design that reflects your style, creativity, and skill as best as possible. If you also want to send in your portfolio with more work that you've done in addition to the Pertainer Monster, then we'll also take a look at all of that. We are paying monthly, and it's also preferred that you have skills in After Effects, but it's not required. The second and last thing I want to say is thank you to all of you for making us possible. I also want to thank Simon Bernier St. Pierre for having the most ridiculous name and also for being the amazing programmer behind many of the wonderful things we do and things to come in our new website. Also, thanks to some of our new hires, Mickey and Austin, for helping us with looking through replays. Without our crew and our fans, we would have nothing, so thank you all again for everything you do, and it's been a pleasure so far to work for the LOL community.